Uh, my name is Moses uh, Chiume. I'm a Malawian, currently living in South Africa. I'm the secretary of the organization called Movement of Advocacy Group in Southern Africa. In short, it's called MAXA. Uh, we fight for the rights of migrants, especially Malawians who are living in South Africa. Yes. What challenges exactly do they face? Uh, the main challenge, you know, it's actually it's a general challenge to each and every migrant who is here in South Africa. It's, uh, it's documentation. That's the major challenge. However, um, uh, we also face a lot of challenges, especially with the employers. Uh, the employers, it seems as if they are exploiting Malawians like, uh, too much. And does this uh, exploitation have anything to do with them being undocumented or it also cuts across even those who are documented? Um, it's, it's all about undocumented. Because if you are documented, you, are, you know, you can't be exploited. Uh, and what employment challenges exactly? Is it anything to do with salaries? Um, salaries and treatment as well. Uh, can you maybe uh, briefly explain? On, treat, on treatment, uh, um, we have come across so many employers who are beating up the Malawians, uh, Malawian workers. If it's not them, then they send the security to beat Malawian workers. Uh, beat them up how yes, with what beat, and they, why they beat they beat them up you know you find out that most of malayans now they've uh, um they are becoming clever like before um it seems as if um they don't want to wait like uh uh working they've been working under pressure and also been working right. overtime the, the overtime so it seems as if now if I, as an employee, I'm refusing to work for overtime, then the employer will take matters on, in, in, his, in his own hands. But uh, according to labor, uh, to labor law, I don't think um, uh, overtime is a must. Overtime yeah. is not a must. So this is, this is one of the challenges that Malawians are also facing. And in terms of uh, salaries? Yes, in terms of salaries, uh, we've seen, we've noticed that most Malayans are getting less salaries, yet they are working Sunday to Sunday. And uh, they, are even, they are even calling themselves that, they are even saying that they are working from Sunday to Malawi, meaning that there's no resting time. It's Sunday to Malawi. So, yeah, uh, you find that the person is working seven days a week, um, uh, six to six or seven to seven. But, uh, you know, the money that is getting is very less, not even a minimum, not even close to minimum wage. Oh, uh, yes. Are you at liberty to say how much they earn and usually which types of jobs do they do? Is it uh, professional jobs or just any other job? Um, actually, it's kind of mixed. Uh, we have those who are working, who are working in textile. Um, and we also have those who are working in, uh, you know, uh, in the retail shops, um, yeah, in the in even in the wholesale shops. So yes, uh, it, it 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 depends. Uh, and the living conditions of these Malawians, do they do they afford flats of their own? No, they don't afford the flats of their own. We have some who are living in the uh, in the shacks. We have some who are living in the flats, but you find that in one, flat, you know, a single, a single room flat, um, uh, or you find maybe there are about eight or ten people in a single room. So it's some sort of like uh, uh, you know sharing a room because of the, you know they cannot manage to pay for the I mean, for the for the for the whole room or for uh, one person cannot manage to pay for the whole room, so they tend up to be uh, like to. To be sharing the rooms and who employs them mostly um uh, we have chinese and we have also our african brothers ethiopians somalians yeah and also the pakistans and is the treatment the same all across board no it's not the same um we would see the our own african brothers um, they treat Malawians better than at least the, 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 Ch the Chinese. Uh, and what do you think is the reason behind that? Um, I'm not sure what is the reason, but uh, I will just give you an example. You find out that maybe a Malawian who's working for, a uh, for a, uh, a, an Ethiopian or a Somalian in a tech shop, uh, they will close him inside the shop. The guy will be staying there. 
they, you know, they won't give him that freedom to go to be going out or to be going around. You'll be sleeping there. You'll be doing everything in the in the house, and then the or the employer takes the keys with him, goes to his house. What if something happens in the room? I uh, mean, in the shop. The guy, uh, uh, like as I'm talking to you now, um, sitting with a case that happened in uh, in Northern Cape. Uh, it happened that the uh, the a Malayan guy was bent down inside the inside inside the shop, you know, to death. So up until now, we don't even know where the employer is. And so that's another challenge. Yeah. And uh, obviously there are some intervention measures that you employ as an organization. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe tell us about those and how successful they have been? Um, yes, you know, we, we, we work with, the, you know, in such kind of cases we work with police because, you know, it's a, it's a police case. It's not, we cannot take matters on, in, you know, in, in our hands. Uh, we work with the, uh, with, the, with the law enforcement agencies and, the, and all those authorities. So, yes. And in terms of labor matters, what do you do? What kind of interventions have you applied? Uh, in terms of, of labor matters, you mean on, the, on this? In terms of, yeah, like in terms of mistreatment at work, unfair dismissals, law pay, and other stuff like that. Um, luckily, we've been working with uh, the CCMA since the formation of the organization in 2016. The CCMA has managed to train Malawians, about uh, 300 Malawians, um, you know, just to know about, about their rights, uh, you know, the labor rights. So yes, we are very grateful to, to the CCMA for training all, all, I mean, such uh, such kind of, you know, such a big number, a Malawian number. Yes, so yes, that's it. And how many Malawians roughly do we have in South Africa? And how many are members of MAGS? Uh, you know, the question that you've just asked me, even if you can ask the South African government, we never tell you, even if you can ask our own embassy, the Malayan embassy, they will not even tell you the exact number. But, uh, you know, roughly, um, this is just approximation. Um, we might be about uh, 300,000, 400,000.